But this came up one day and I remember this, I was surprised to realize that, that I didn't think of myself as a musician. And then when I said, well, what do you think of yourself as? Uh, the answer was I just thought of myself as a learner. Like, I want to learn everything I can get my hands on. Not long ago, I wrote a book about my life on the creative edge. As a composer, improviser, and producer, I knew how creativity worked for me, but now I want to know more. So I'm looking for answers, for some real-world insight and inspiration. Today, I'm sitting down with percussionist and author Thomas Zirkel. I'm going to ask him to fill in the blank. Creativity is? The creative developments that make me the most excited are the ones that take two ideas that seem completely unrelated and then put them together to create something no one's done before. And if they're elegant and simple and people look at it and say, oh, I should have thought of that, or I, I wish I'd thought of that. When I say that about other people's ideas, like those are the most exciting things, the most exciting uh, discoveries for me. So in order to be able to make those connections, you have to know something about, about more than just your field. You know, I'm not, I'm not really great at, at the other things that I do, but you know, I've done some woodworking, I've done, been a cabinet maker, um, I've done some sculpture, which wasn't anything to show to people, but, but a sculpture and I'm doing drawing. So when I do a collaboration with a sculptor, uh, as I did a couple years ago with Joe Chesla, where he created all these sculptures that were meant to be played by a percussionist. The, that process was very interactive of his sculpting because we were talking about the physics of the way instruments are made and um, showing him different things from different cultures and then we were talking about how they could be constructed. And I really felt like I had, I wasn't able to do most of the complex things he was doing but I was able to give him the information that he needed. And it really felt like a collaboration, like it was a lot of fun. Ideas, I never have problems with that. Like, I have the opposite problem. I have so many ideas that for me, the difficulty is getting them on getting them recorded mm -hmm. and and then manage them once they're recorded and like so if I I try to keep notes everywhere and then I lose a lot of them but the, the concept I've been calling it question theory but you basically start with asking the large questions of you know the first questions you have to ask if you're gonna write a piece are what what's the instrumentation going to be what's the form of the piece you get these general ideas and then once you get those, those large questions answered, then you start moving to smaller questions. And as you get, the questions get smaller and smaller, more detailed and more detailed, you eventually get to all the details of the piece, you know, like Schenker's foreground material. And that has been really eye-opening for me as a creative artist, like that process, which is generally left to the subconscious. I'm able to bring it up to the, the, my conscious thought and actually figure out what are the questions, if I've got writer's block, what are the questions that are missing, yeah. and, and then answer them. And as soon as you answer them, you have your notes. When I'm trying to understand a Beethoven symphony, if I get to a, or the piano sonatas I'm more familiar with, when I get to a chord, then I'm like, that's an odd sounding chord, why is it there? Mm -hmm. Then I just start asking the same question, you know, it's like doing the same process in reverse gets me into Beethoven's head and, and it helps me understand that weird chord and why it's there and how it relates to the previous phrase or the next phrase.
what are you thinking about when you're when you're improvising? Do you have anything in particular that you're thinking about, or what sort of a process goes into that? I mean, we've never talked about it. I can't mm, we haven't. Just, you just do it, you know. Well, rhythmically in my mind, there's this general kind of a score going on all the time. It's kind of like rhythmic dictation, where all the parts are fitting in together vertically. So I'm always thinking about that, or aware of that, and trying to find gaps that might be interesting for me to put something in that would kind of fill in the score. I'm trying to think about how to make phrases and how to use non-pitched instruments to create melodies. That's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. Look at the instruments in front of me and find some interesting way to put them together to create textures. I was really excited last week. I was, I think Tracy started singing something or maybe she was playing some notes and I started singing like a simple little melody, like a C, B flat, C, D, C, like in a low range. And then three or four minutes later in the same piece, I was playing some other instruments and I realized that I had bells that were pitched at all those specific notes. So I started ringing out the same melody that I had been singing a little while ago. And I was so excited to find that connection between something three or four minutes earlier and what I was doing right then. Do you think about anything at all when you're starting, um, or do you just kind of jump in? Or? Yeah, it changes. Sometimes I just like to put my hands on something and see what happens. Yeah. And other times it's kind of planned, and I'm going to start with this time, this time signature. Or mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about the form and trying to being aware of who's leading changes in the form and who is um, when it's my turn or when when I think this this section has gone on long enough and the audience needs something different to hold their attention. How much does the audience's you know engagement have to do with your work in general? Do you my I, I think it's foremost in my mind. Um, so I'm trying to create things that I would want to listen to as an audience member. But when you're improvising, which is real-time composing, when you're composing it's the same question. You are creating this, this uh, dialogue with the audience. And you, you have all kinds of tools to do that. Repetition, um, your source material, instruments, textures. But what you're doing is you're setting up expectations in the audience and you're creating this psychological experience, like story that they're experiencing. You set up expectations in their mind and you either fulfill or frustrate those expectations. And that's how you control them and lead them through the piece, whether you've composed it or you're improvising. I'm at a concert and I'm listening to a drum set solo and they start playing and it's like this fast series of notes. If that wall of sound continues for two or three minutes, everyone in the audience is going to be bored. Good solos do something different. You know, they use space, long spaces sometimes. And some of the most striking moments in Beethoven compositions are when the pianist will be playing along and then stop for a few seconds in the middle of a movement and then, and then start up again. And it's that sense of expectation that's where the psychology of of leading your audience happens. You know, one of the things that I find interesting is how do you know when it's done? This is a snapshot of what you are doing right now, and you're going to take that snapshot and get it out there and then it's going to be what it is and you may revisit it later and develop it further but what you got to do right now is get it in some kind of form that other people can work with like a lot of people you're, you're wearing a lot of hats you're a yeah. professor you're, you're, you know, you're the director of this avant-garde night here at Tavern of Fine Arts you're putting that an event together every month you know there's all kinds of things that you're doing that go beyond just sitting home and composing. 
I don't think it would help me if I won the lottery and I didn't. <laughs> I would still have to sit down and, and you know, get this idea that's on handwritten paper, get it into the computer and all those details and that really boring work, like yeah. that I would still have to do that. This book I'm working on now, the Rick Tambourine book, mm -hmm. I've got about five weeks until this big conference where I want to have that book in some kind of a printed, sellable mm -hmm. form. And I'm going to have to sit down and just be miserable for a week or two to get it done. I think the key to all this is discipline. And having the self-discipline to go and do things that you don't like doing. And no matter which side you're good at, you know, if you're really good at that anal retentive detail work, you know, sitting and being creative and coming up with the original ideas might be what's the, the slog for that person. And the, the key, it seems to me, what success I have had in different areas, the key has been knowing where my strengths and my weaknesses are, enjoying when I have something that I'm strong at, and and being self-disciplined and making myself do the parts that I don't enjoy. I generally start with a brainstorming session, mm -hmm. get a bunch of material, and then sometimes I'll literally cut it out with paper and rearrange it on the table to get it in the right order. And then once I get an order of topics, then it's easy to expound on them and just get more and more detailed. It's tough because I'm not a very organized person. So getting, you know, getting through all that and making, getting to the final product before I get distracted by the next idea is that's the trouble part for me yeah but I wonder if sometimes you know that idea of disorganized versus organized you know sometimes it's there's method in the chaos or there's uh, sometimes beautiful things coming out of the chaos now, you know. I'm with you and I thrive on the chaos I really like it I like change the trouble is if you're doing a big project like a book the chaos it's good for getting started but in order to finish it you have to be able to do the, the hard slogging work. It isn't fun, or it's never going to get finished. And you know, my house is a is a repository of half finished ideas. And I can see I can see like these are really good ideas, but you know, I've got to manage my time and focus and be disciplined and bored for a certain amount of time to get those ideas like in any kind of format that other people could break.